There we go. All right, cool. Um, so yes, open embedded containers use case. Yes, it's yet another container talk. Yay. Um, about seven years ago, seven years ago, um, and Bruce may remember this, I was pestering Bruce going, hey, what's this meta uh, oversee thing? And he said, oh yeah, it's something I'm playing with. And I'm like, where's the documentation for it? <laughs> um, and I played with it and I said, God, I hate containers. Um, and then I didn't touch it until about four years ago when I was starting a company. And one of the guys who works with me, Paul Barker, says, hey, here's this thing that I'm kind of working on. It's containers. And I went um, and said, uh, yeah, no, you look at that. I don't want to look at that. And then I had no choice but to look at it. And I said, you know what? This is kind of cool. Um, I really like how we're doing this here. So what this is talk is about is one of my customers um, and names are I'm not going to tell you the name um, and kind of some of the things that have driven the development of this product that we're doing that is container based. So the client uh, makes radio transmitters, big ones, uh, three kilowatt transmitters that go in the middle of the woods, in the middle of cities, on ships, all over the place. Um, some of these are really old chipsets that we've had a lot of fun getting U-Boot working on, um, and some old x86 boards, some ADI boards. Um, but the interesting thing about these is some of them are in the middle of nowhere and not a lot of update strategies that don't entail a pair of hiking boots and a USB key. Some of them are internet connected and we need to have multiple update strategies. Um, so that's a challenge. Um, these are also hardware engineers. They are not necessarily OE engineers. As a matter of fact, I've seen some of, of their attempts at this and I went, okay. So they need an easy way to modify their images in containers. And is there an easier way to do that than an image BB or local.conf? Yes. Um, they also need to have the container on the image at build time. Because remember when I said some of these transmitters are sitting in the forest somewhere, uh, they can't do like a first boot provision. Um, oh, I'm going to go to the, my feed URI and pull this container down and start running it. Nope, can't do that. Um, so single build, multiple upgrade paths. So uh, Paul Barker um, created this uh, uh, project called Oryx, or Oryx Embedded Linux. And it's lightweight Linux container. Scott mentioned it earlier. Um, we don't use Docker. Oh, God, I can do a 30-minute presentation on why we don't use Docker. Um, I don't want my clients' radio transmitters being part of a Bitcoin mining operation. Um, yeah, right? Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Why would I, why would I not want that? Um, <laughs> I, 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 I could be making money in better ways. <laughs> Yeah, if it's my Bitcoin mine. Well, honestly, remember the LPC 32XX? Yeah, I'm not going to be making a lot of Bitcoin off of that. <coughs> um, so we're using Metro Virtualization and MetaMender to create a strategy for these guys to be able to um, update their containers and their firmware either or, because some of these, again, are sitting on ships and they might not necessarily have the best internet access, um, but we also are avoiding the entire Docker, Kubernetes, all of that, and just using what we call Oryx command, which is just a wrapper of run C, deals with a lot of the source URI, adding sources, running containers. Um, we also have integrated uh, Mender into this, as much as we can right now because and we talk about this a little later um getting some of the vendor auto patching working with vendor u-boots um doesn't necessarily always work clean um 
And that's not a vendor problem, that's a vendor you boots problem. Um, so yes. So how do we invoke a build using Oryx? We do it this way. Do folks remember the talk I gave like maybe about two, three hours ago where I said something about wrapping things and how you really shouldn't do this. Uh, where's BitBake? <laughs> um, yes, there's a reason why we did this. Um, well, you can get to BitBake. So you just do build meta or machine name, uh, what system name you want to do in the shell and drops you into a dev shell. And you can do BitBake virtual kernel, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the reasons that we did this is because one build spawns multiple BitPick processes. Because remember, we have to provision that uh, host image with the containers. Well, the containers are being built by BitPick. So we go build all the containers, and then we build the uh, host image, and then we pack it all up. And yes, we know about multi-config. Um, yes, we do. We know about multi-config. Um, Build.py kind of got created at about the same time that the multi-config patch happened. And we just said, eh, eh, eh. And yes, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So single image builds. Oryx has, well, two images, um, but mostly one image. It's called Oryx image. And we modify these using that build script um, based on two sets of config files, application profiles or system profiles. So application profo profile defines software to be installed on either your host or guest, depending on what the application is. Um, system profile depends on what the hardware is, um, whether it's the host, whether it's the guest, what artifacts need are needed for deployment. Um, and it also can define what is started and how it started on the host. So let's see what this actually looks like. So um, if, if you've seen a bake recipe or a local conf where someone just says, yes, I want all these image extra installs thrown in, yeah, that's essentially what this is. So this is a host that has the runc open containers, which is required, NetNS, um, and all or its command all installed into it on the host class. And then it gets a little bit more complicated with the uh, guest image. So guest image here, we need, to, we're gonna start an SSH um, applica or application on boot. Um, we're gonna define some guest capabilities and we're gonna add some additional um, um, applications onto the guest. And then it gets more fun. So in this case, it's the native profile for the system. Um, we're going to say these are profile or packages that we install for any system that's native, any system that's actually running on bare steel. Um, we're going to define the the uh, block map. We're going to define where the root FS image is and kind of some of the output files. It's pretty straightforward here. And then we have the guest, um, which is also pretty straightforward. So what this allows us to do is to use one image definition and just set a bunch of variables on the command line, pass them in, and this way the, uh, our client never has to touch an image definition. Um, one of the reasons that we do this is because um, Clients touching image definitions are sometimes interesting and they do dangerous, dangerous things that we don't want them to do. So this kind of keeps them out of that. Um, and it also allows us to kind of maintain just that one image definition. Um, this is something that is relatively new. Um, we needed a local feed. Um, when we started this, we were just assuming all these devices are going to be internet connected, bad, bad uh, um, assumption on our part. And these guys were like, well, yeah, no, these all need to be provisioned and the, the guest needs to be on it and it can't be a first boot thing. So um, there's a um, um, the host test. Um, application profile defines how we set up a local feed. And in this case, 
what we're saying is we're going to um, define all the uh, different container images that are on that host. So in this case, we're saying we have a guest minimal image. We could do a guest full command line in image. And when we build this, this is smart enough to know, all right, boot up each one of these. Um, now, one of the things that, we're, that we require if you're going to do a local uh, image feed is bringing into in the Oryx local feed uh, BitBank recipe. Um, so there's an example of this in host test. This was um, a fun thing, and we actually have it working rather well for Raspberry Pi 3. Um, and it's not been too difficult to get it to work for other hardware. Some hardware has been more interesting than others. Um, doing over the air solutions, over or doing updating update solutions, period is hard. Um, there's a few ways of doing it. Um, there's rolling it your own and having it blow up constantly and then going and, and figuring out, okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? Finding all those edge cases. How do we do this securely? How do we do this um, so that, you know, we know what we're getting is, is actually what's being provided. Um, so we looked at building this ourselves and then we just said you know what the mender guys actually do a halfway decent job of this so maybe we should just use what they're doing um and with the mender um they just the the last mender release i believe it was last one had module updates so instead of updating the whole firmware i cannot update just the container itself so what we've done is incorporate a lot of this into um, what we're doing. Um, and again, vendor U-boot integration can be a challenge because sometimes that patch doesn't want, want to patch U-boot because someone decided that they were using a U-boot from 2014 and labeled it 2015. Um, yeah, now that only took me four days to figure out. Um, Again, this is a relatively new project. It's been kind of around for three years, um, but it's really started to get customers in the past year and a half. Um, and we have broken things. We, and like, this is not a marketing talk. I am not a marketing person. If you want to talk to a marketing person, I have my marketing person's cards. I will be more than happy to give them to you. Um, I'm going to admit all the broken things. Or it's command. Um, it's used for controlling the containers, but we wrote it in Python 3. Now, this is great for normal systems, but we have a system with a firmware error so that we don't necessarily have 512 megs, um, but we certainly need a U-boot partition, a data partition, the flip, two flip-flop partitions, and things are starting to get tight. So, um, because the only thing on the host partition that needs Python 3 is Oryx command, we're gonna we're planning on rewriting this, um, so we don't have to put Python 3 on it. Um, Oryx command does not care what container source you give it, it will do what you tell it to. Um, so if you give it a container source for x86 and you're running on a Raspberry Pi, yeah, it'll try. It'll try. It'll blow up. It'll try. Um, so we're looking at working on getting it so that when we generate those containers and put them into the container feed, we say, yes, no, you do not, you know, this runs on this architecture and this ar architecture alone. ESDK and DevTool are broke. They do not work on that on this. It sucks. I am unhappy about it. Um, part of the re it, it, so we're kind of stuck doing do populate SDK for for giving customers an SDK that they can play with. Um, part of this is around how we get how we access Bitbake. Um, part of it is also how do you do dev tool for a container when you have one single image. Um, so there's some rethinking that we need to do around this. Um, but also, yes, build.py came around when multi-config was coming out and we saw the multi-config patch. We're like, 
I remember shared state when that first came out. Now we're going to do it this way. Um, but now that multi-config is kind of settled down, um, there are some fun things that we can do with this. One of the things about the, the main build script I don't like is that it has this kind of one ring to rule them all. It's the build script, the, the, the um, release script, and we're going to split some of that out. Um, this is what happened when release engineers write software. Um, it's a thing. We do it. And MetaMender. My only complaint about Mender is please, 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 BB files dynamic. I know the only people who use it are free scale, but um, when I have to build uh, images for images that are just no containers on it, no updates, no nothing, a dev image, and I have that MetaMender in my layer thing, it goes and tries to do funny things with Uboot, and Uboot goes, and dies. Um, so I would like the Mender Mender layer to be a little smarter. Honestly, part of this is also um, it could patch Uboot if Uboot vendors would not suck. Um, so this isn't not ne this isn't necessarily a Mender issue. It's also a vendor issue. And yes, I literally wrote this this morning because it, my entire weekend was packed with FOSDEM funness. So this is really short. Um, so yes, questions. Oh yeah, if, if you want to get started there. Yes, Merrick. So why don't you use mainline you and be done with it? <laughs> 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 I mean, the LPC is in mainline you the XA disks is there as well, so what's the problem? Oh dear. <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, why, why don't we? Yeah, because vendors. Um, and LPC isn't, it, last I checked, it wasn't in mainline. It is there. 3.5 XX is there. As of when? As of, I don't know, it's there. Okay. Check, check mainline. Okay, have you done a Git log? Have you done a git log on who uh, wrote that? Uh, there probably is a Togon Labs email address attached yes, to that. There is, there is nothing like that. I mean, the ARC file is all my Bible. Okay. Is like a human person since okay. Okay. Because last I checked, it was broken in there. Could be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's broken. Um, I don't deal with you, boot. <laughs> Go talk to Trevor. <laughs> yeah, no, well, no, and actually that is, we are fixing it. We are sending a patch. Um, yes, 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 yes. But talk to Trevor. Do you know Trevor Warner? I do know him. Okay, talk to Trevor. Is he doing the LPC stuff? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, for, for this board, whether it works for other boards, it's, you know, I know that there's another board that's coming out that, does have the LPC 32XX in it. Um, but if I remember correctly on the LPC stuff, um, there was that U-boot cleanup that was happening um, because, it what? It was I could have sworn it was slated for removal. Slated maybe. Okay, it may have been slated for removal and planned on removing, but I could swear that it was removed. All right, we'll we'll sit down and check after this. Hmm. Where people take those old CPUs from? I didn't hear you. Where, where are they getting these old CPUs? Uh, <laughs> you would not believe some of the hardware I've seen. <laughs> some stuff has dust on it. <laughs> have you um, seen my what? Have you seen my Z board? No. It has dust on it. <laughs> Yeah, but is it your Z board or yeah. a customer's Z board? No, it's just one that sits on top of my stack of boards. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, some of the, you know how this is. They, it goes, oh, there's a cheap CPO. Let's buy five million of them and keep them around for twenty years. Um, so you know, this is one of those things that, yeah, I don't know where they're getting the old CPUs from NX or NPX. Um, other questions. 
Cool. Just, uh, so your containers are, are there individual apps? Well, you can do individual apps or you can do multiple apps in a container. Um, I actually have a use case where I'm going to end up having to do multiple apps at startup and I haven't tested that yet. Um, there's, um, we're, I'm working right now on a container that kind of tunnels the X display um, because there's a request for that. Um, so like a lot of the development that we do on this is just driven by customer requests, um, which is why I'm asking for other people because we have a few customers on this and I want other people who have use cases on this. Um, all right. Cool.